Now let's talk a little bit about how you might add detail to custom elements. Now custom objects are, can you know, you can use Archicad's tools to create a number of different types of custom objects, right? So for example, I could use a slab tool to create uh, the top of a bench, top of a table, a cabinet panel, a door panel or a sash. I could use the wall tool to create the window frame, the door frame or panel, a desk support. Uh, I use the column tool to create table legs and chair legs. I could use the beam tool to create a table top or window sash or a roof tool to create a piano. It's like a sloped element, right? So like the piano top, the slope there, or a display that's kind of sloped uh, on your display on a table or on a wall. <clears throat> And, and the idea here is that you're basically taking, you know, our, our basic tools in Archicad and you're, you're repurposing them to use for creating um, uh, the components that you need to create for custom elements. And when you do that, you want, kind of similar to the SEO, you want to create a, uh, a layer for creating these custom objects. So you want to create an object development layer so it gets turned off. You know, if you're creating that in the file that you're working in, it gets turned off um, when, for your um, project documents but you turn it on when you want to um, go and edit or create custom objects. And so what I tend to do is I, I tend to create a, an object development layer, usually with a zero X, so it kind of goes to the end of my layers, and, and then um, add that to your uh, layer combinations along with a layer uh, that um, is, is part of that as well. Now, this is a really good example. This is from uh, a client who does um, I actually was doing that historic project I was just talking about. And they used uh, that, this project to do a lot of really custom elements. Uh, so these are custom um, uh, railings. And so they uh, took those custom railings, they drew those railings as, as 2D elements, and they extruded that into 3D elements and saved that into these different railing end panels um, uh, for single panels for base, et cetera. And you can see here where they, they use a combination of the wall tool, slab tool to create these elements, right? So, you know, once they've created it, they create the height of it, they create the thickness of it, uh, and then they save that, which I'll show you in a second, as an object. What's really nice about that, again, is that, you know, we often think of the wall tool as being for a wall, but in fact, it's really just a vertical tool. So we can take that vertical tool, we can extrude it, and then we can create these detailed elements. And once we have that, uh, we can, of course, view it in 3D. And then we can save that uh, as an object. And again, you can rotate that even to a specific view that you want saved uh, using the 3D projection settings as well. And then once you're ready, you go and save that selection as an object. And give it a name. And then that becomes an object within your library. And this is a really powerful way to, again, create these kind of custom elements that you need and are part of your workflow.